Mega Megatronics. And welcome back to Mega Megatronics. We are continuing our Tuning 101 series with a case study. So we're going to look at tuning a 1.4 liter turbo LUV Ecotech engine. It's running the GM E78 engine control module and we'll be using HP tuners. And the vehicle platforms in the state states are uh, the Cruise and Sonic and uh, I believe a little Buick SUV. Uh, but we'll take a look at that later. So this is basically part six. So there'll be a few parts for this case study series. And our goal here, uh, specifically with the 1.4T um, in a cruise, is to double the factory horsepower. So it's just a goal, and as I put there, it may not even be achievable, uh, given these constraints here of using the factory turbo, um, no internal engine mods to the lower end rotating assembly and the valve train, anything. So no, no mods anywhere there and uh, no transmission or axle modifications. So to, to basically review all the topics uh, throughout the different parts in the series, we'll look at the platform, bolt-on modifications, uh, HP tuners, uh, basically engine calibration. So modifying the calibration and uh, I think we'll be getting into some power additives, uh, maybe a little surprise. Okay, so let's take a look at the platform, the specific platform of the Delta II, which is designed by Opel GM in uh, Russell Schim, Germany. course and we like Germany they've got castles and beer and geniuses as well sometimes there's geniuses in Germany so specifically in the USA uh, the popular model is the Chevy Cruze and believe it or not the Chevy Volt and Buick Verano is a sedan, and then there's other models here uh, from Opel. So all of these are running this platform, so we're not talking about the powertrain or engine or anything, we're talking about the chassis is uh, Delta II. So some notable features of the cruise platform, the Delta II, is it's pretty lightweight and just a uh, couple models to put it into perspective. They're not e e equivalent vehicles, but just to give you a perspective of how lightweight it is. And uh, my Solstice, my Kappa platform Solstice, uh, Solstice Sky, uh, weighs about the same as this vehicle, uh, the little convertible. And uh, for some of you, uh, this is an advantage. The uh, They designed a vehicle in using metric units, so hopefully there wasn't any uh, confusion. My car gets 40 rods to the hog's head, and that's the way I like it! Uh, because they use metric units, base 10, and hopefully they're, you know, things worked out. So another notable feature uh, is they offered a Watts Link rear suspension. So not all trim levels, uh, you know, LS and LT, um, so this is usually like an, probably an LTZ and most likely the RS will get this type of suspension. And of course, there's plenty of information uh, regarding the Watts Link rear suspension, uh, which gives you better control of the rear wheels during, I guess, high side G-force events. And uh, another great benefit is it's uh, fairly aerodynamic. And we can put that into perspective here. Uh, there's speculation that the University of Mich Michigan solar car is about 0 0.07 coefficient of drag. Um, and that's like a unitless figure to uh, sort of explain how well it moves through the air. So if, is it a brick or a teardrop? And then there's another factor 
uh, called area. So that's frontal area of the vehicle. So those two things are taken into consideration uh, right here. So that's vehicle dependent. So the little Porsche Boxster is doing pretty good um, because it's got a small frontal area and 0.28. And of course, you know, the Chevy Cruze is a pretty small vehicle. Uh, so you can see, you know, the Ford GT500, uh, it's um, above average, which is not good. Uh, but they just power through it with the V8 torque. Um, and then we got that Jeep right there, which is pretty much a, yeah, a brick, a cinder block. Um, but, um, you know, the, it doesn't have a gigantic frontal area. So that helps. So that's important. So with the velocity squared component here, so this is exponential. We have the squared component. So anything that multiplies with that is, is only amplifying the exponent. So the goal here is to have a small CDA so that coefficient of drag times the area, the frontal area of the vehicle, those two things always go together. Uh, so we want to reduce that so that we were not impacted uh, by this velocity exponent here uh, at very high speeds. So it's really for performance. The cruise, uh, I, it's probably not uh, recommended to be driving it over 100 miles per hour all the times, I guess, uh, unless it's uh, spec for a race, uh, actual race car. Speaking of racing, here's the cruise at the WTCC racing series here. And here's some pictures here. And let's look at their results here. So they got first place in 2011, 2012, 2013. So the cruise didn't hit the United States until 2011. Uh, but it was actually launched um, everywhere else, import, you know, Asia, Europe, uh, 2009 is when they launched this platform. So you can see they did pretty well. Um, and, I, you know, it does have to do with sponsorships and things like that. So sponsors have been changed uh, around here and there. But again, they were able to take this platform. And I can, as you can see, that small picture is it body in white. And they basically caged it out, and you can check out their race car on YouTube. And now we're going to take a look at the powertrain here. So this vehicle was offered with a 1.8 liter uh, normally, or yeah, normally aspirated, or sometimes naturally aspirated. Uh, it's uh, in literature both ways. Uh, but anyways, it's NA, there's no turbo on the 1.8, but the 1.4 T, uh, is turbocharged from the factory. See the first gen Cruise and Sonics are running the LUV. And here's a picture of this and that's the turbo on the front there. It's covered by some heat shields, the, uh, upper heat shield there, the turbos under there. And you can see the three way cat below that, that large catalytic converter. Bull, uh, on the turbine exhaust side of the turbocharger. Um, and this ha does have variable valve timing. And so the actual uh, displacement is 83 cubic inches or 1364 cc. Compression ratio 9.5 to 1. Forge rods from the factory. So 138 brake horsepower, flywheel horsepower, uh, and 148 foot pounds. And there are some small variations. Uh, definitely depends on the tune. And it has been light weighted. This is generation three. And we can look at some weaknesses uh, in the stock configuration. Uh, there were uh, early oil feed. Uh, the, so basically the turbocharger line wasn't properly insulated. So it would cook uh, oil. Also, uh, people running non-synthetics uh, or inferior oils that get cooked up and coke the line and then... Uh, basically stop the flow of lubrication to the turbo and then your turbo blows up uh, there's cracking turbo turbines um, you'll see that's kind of a common failure unfortunately um, I, I think my vehicle is okay but i bought a spare engine and it de definitely had a cracked uh, turbo so that's the factory wastegate that seal or that seat there cracks 
Um, and then there is a lot of uh, talk on the inner on the interwebs on the forums there of PC V uh, crankcase ventilation systems or just ventilation systems for the turbochargers. So we, there's valves that fail and then cause um, extreme pressures inside of the crankcase and then do bad stuff. And also, there's not too much information on the maximum safe power. Um, there's not too many. Uh, there, there were also early piston failures, but that has been fixed since then. So that was like 2011 models. Uh, but so far, there isn't too much word of exploding LEV uh, turbocharged mod modified engines. So here's that air inlet. Uh, here's part of the crankcase. There's actually a valve there, so that's the second part of the PCV system. Uh, here's the blow-off valve, uh, factory blow-off valve, and that's connected to the compressor of the turbocharger. Alright, let's take a look at bolt-ons. And the specific bolt-ons uh, will be feedback systems. So this is really important. Uh, you need to know exactly what your engine is doing. So we'll definitely install wideband oxygen sensor uh, along with the gauge, um, but there will be an output to HP tuners. Uh, we'd also want a boost gauge. Uh, and then to mount up these, we'll get a pillar pod uh, from ZZP and we'll install those gauges. And also I uh, kind of created a HP tuners scanner mount. So that's a seven inch tablet running Windows uh, 8, 8.1, the mobile version. So I'm able to run uh, HP tuners uh, pretty reliably with this setup. So continuing our bolt-ons, let's take a look at uh, the exhaust system. So uh, I installed a full exhaust system, so that will include the downpipe, and you can see the stock oxygen sensor. And then just below that, there is the Innovate wideband system hooked into there. Uh, and then we installed a midpipe, and then a cat back uh, system with a performance muffler, uh, and of course a shiny chrome uh, exhaust tip. And can bolt-ons on the intake side to uh, help with the breathing and help with the cooling. Um, we have a short ram intake, uh, aka hot air intake. And now we have the turbocharger. Uh, so there's the hot side of the turbocharger air uh, intake tract. And that goes to a extra, extra large intercooler. Uh, that is about you know four times as heavy, uh, four times as massive as the stock intercooler, so there should be a lot of cooling uh, potential there. And then on the cool side, there's uh, more intake track tubing uh, into the intake, the LEV intake. Uh, but. <laughs> And then we had to upgrade the fuel systems. So we were actually getting near uh, max duty cycle. And the injectors you want for the cruise, the LUV, 1.4T LUV Sonic or cruise, uh, 42 pound green giants. They are pretty aggressive. Um, you, you uh, need to increase the 
for idle RPM is what I found because the minimum pulse width was way too low. Uh, but so I turned it up to maybe 800 horse, uh, 800 RPM. So the LUV gets the EV1, and for other um, GM Ecotex uh, and LS engines, they'll probably be from you know using the factory harness an EV6 or an EV1. Uh, so you'll definitely want to check the forums on exactly what you have, or you can easily see the connector type there. So you see the green one there for the cruise has those little tabs on three sides, and a little uh, and those flat pins. And then another locating uh, tab on the inside there. And then on the EV6, you see how it clips only on one side. So it's a single side clip. Uh, so that's how you can kind of tell the difference. Well, that wraps it up with part six of the Tuning 101 case study with the Cruise. And buckle up for part seven. We're going to take a really deep dive into HP tuners and look at everything required to uh, manipulate and calibrate and modify uh, with the Chevrolet Cruze E78 ECU. Well, thank you for your support. Uh, please subscribe if you enjoyed the content and also like, and feel free to leave any comments. And again, thank you and have a great day. Mm -hmm.